my project was I'm trying to build a 3D laser scanner or photometer, mostly with the purpose of trying to image rock surface roughness in the lab, like you do in the field with maybe a LiDAR scanner or something, or maybe even in the lab, this is, you use a proper laser profilometer and everything, but in my case, I was just trying to build a 3D scanner to do the same task at such a coarse resolution, more or less, but using this prototype, you were thinking of taking it forward for better resolutions and so on. So, yeah, so I was trying to create an inexpensive Arduino-based scanner. It cost me about 30 bucks to do it. Uh, the working principle for this is essentially we have um, a block of wood on which I embedded my, which I mounted my on my stepper motor, and there's a laser and a webcam that is looking at the line laser. So essentially, the webcam looks at this, is this circular object of the object that is being scanned, and as the line laser moves, the first step of motor is rotating, at each step, the webcam looks at what is being projected and records only the red, red pixels on this object. And it simply solves a line and plane equation using the plane that is formed by the laser on the object, and for each point that is projected by the webcam, it considers that as a vector, and solves the intersection of the line and plane to get a point <coughs> for each point on this. And then we kind of reduce the resolution to store it in a text file. So yeah, that's how it creates the point cloud, and these are the kind of governing equations that go into this um, line and plane formulation. The plane represents the line laser, the plane formed by the line laser, and the line equation itself is for each point on the point cloud as seen by the webcam, which is at an angle to this um, laser. And one of the kind of nuances in this thing that I guess came later on and I did not anticipate was of lens distortion. So kind I did not correct for lens distortion or the lens curvature or anything, and the way I got around this problem was simply to ensure before each run that I focus my webcam on the line laser in such a way that the red line of the laser falls exactly at the center of the image formed by my webcam so that there is no angle that forms between the line laser and the central line of the webcam. And the list of paths that are required for making this was essentially the red board I used two 10K paths which would control the speed at which I'm stepping and the maximum angle that it has to move to scan the whole object. A line laser module, a uh, webcam that I just found at a thrift store, um, stepper motor, driver, and some capacitors. So this is what my final thing looks like. I have the line laser that's perfectly perpendicular to the block of wood. I had a counterweight because it kept falling off on the other side. And the webcam is at an angle. Ideally, you want the angle to be approximately 10, 15 degrees to 40, 45 degrees. Any more than that, any less than that, I cannot keep the red line from the line laser at the center of my image. At the distances that I want to keep the object at. So there's a circuitry that goes into it. This is from another website that I found the circuitry. And I'm not using the <coughs> LED, LED screen for this project. So everything other than that, I have incorporated in this, and additionally, I also include a button so that I can reset my whole system after each run, which um, the software that does the processing does not do on its own. So I have a connection going from my red board to the step motor connected to the driver, and I have two more potentiometers connected in parallel to this that control the speed and the total length covered. So this was kind of really bad from the I don't think you see anything there, but so we tried I tried to scan the small tape completely and what it gives you is this is the background formed by this thing, the black piece of cloth. And essentially the tape distorts like this. So I'm not getting really a circular object out of it, but it gives the shape, but it's just kind of distorted in a weird manner. It also, the this problem has not been able to solve this. It also picks up 
I don't know what they are, dust particles or something, but anything that comes in between the object and the web camera records it and it solves for that particular object. So you always have a small dust cloud between the object and the webcam, which usually also happens in light as cams and stuff, but in this case I'm post-processing in the software called processing and it does not its functionality in terms of working with point clouds is pretty limited. So I cannot really do all those things. But at some point I am thinking about going to Python on my lab to do the post processing. So the challenges were that I encountered during the project was that first the environment was while interacting with the webcam so I could pretty much how the software works is it selects all the reds beyond a certain threshold from 0 to 255, 0 being black and 255 being white. And depending on the darkness of the room, it picks up colors that it should not be picking up and it doesn't really do a great job of differentiating between browns and pinks, the whole <coughs> spectrum of the red. So ideally, I, I have to do this in a darker room and the object I'm scanning should probably not be too brown. Um, the other thing was micro-stepping, which would help eliminate the jerky motions that these single steps have at this point, which I've not. I did play around with micro-stepping and pulse modulation a little bit, but I couldn't get it to work on this specific stepping motor driver. I don't really know why. Um, the third was, as I mentioned previously, there was a lens curvature. If you see in the plane here, it's actually not really a straight plane. It's kind of curved. <coughs> <coughs> so yeah, my future work would be focusing on getting better resolutions of my scans, trying to get microstepping working, and also I kind of want to want to put my setup in a the whole thing inside a dark container so I can actually scan smaller objects like the rocks that I actually want to uh, work with, and I would be moving away from processing to Python or MATLAB for post processing the some of my takeaways from doing this project was I learned about electrical circuitry and problemetry and most all about that specific step of motor driver because it was a nightmare to work with. Uh, and uh, I also <coughs> learned about preemptive and reactive design considerations. So what I wanted to start with versus what I ended up with and all the things that I did not think about as I was doing it, but I had to solve for later on. So, a one hole pass and then it comes back to its original resting position which I can control in the pause, both the speed and the location it goes to and if I press my button it starts off again. It's recording data? Not right now, no. So for recording data I need it to be running the, <coughs> the processing Saves, it creates a text file and saves it in the uh, folder. The text file contains information about the total distance covered and all the pixels that it recorded during each run and what the current angle of the webcam is and so on. So once I part that text file and put it in another uh, code where I have to calibrate the distance between the camera and the laser, the distance between them and the object, and the angle that the camera makes you the vertical. So these are the three parameters that go into it. 
and it solves for that in case. So I can show you a point cloud that I've already created, which might just be easier. Any other questions while he's getting that going? So what happens when you're scanning? So this is what, this was of that tape that I created. I don't know if you guys can see it at all, but mm -hmm. pretty much. Right now, if I if I play around with the point cloud in this processing, I'm not really able to say measure distances or anything like that. I can see the point cloud, but all the distance information is stored in the text file itself. So that's kind of the so what happens when you scan a sample of route without a reddit? Like a like a felt like you scan a felt bar. Oh it, well, like, it's probably gonna be one or two points off the point cloud, right? We can afford okay. to lose those points. If, if I did put the rock inside, that's why I want to build the black box, is I want to put the rock inside that box. Right. So when I'm actually <coughs> scanning through it, it's not going to know what the color of the rock itself is. Okay. I would set the threshold really high, so the reds would look like white in that dark environment, and it's just going to pick up what it's seeing. Yeah. yeah, so that's why I want it in a darker room, pretty much. Yeah. Anything else? All right, awesome. Nice to